Hey guys, wow, I truly never thought I'd see the day, but we are actually finishing this series. It might have been like a hundred years ago since I started this project, but hey, we got there in the end. All right, final part, let's go. So this video is mostly gonna consist of adding all of those small details. This tends to be the last stretch of like any painting. So the last like 10% before I'd call myself like fully finished. I will at certain points reassess certain areas like the arms and hand and be like, hey, now that I've like brought everything else up to a certain polish, these arms and hands feel like they just stand out a bit too much. Like either the anatomy isn't convincing enough or maybe the rendering isn't quite up to par. At a certain point, I also asked Omerjan for his expertise and he so kindly sketched over my drawing in red to sort of point out problem areas. I'll also show you the last final touches I add to every painting, which is a layer of noise and a couple of non-destructive sharpening layers. More on this later. So continuing on from the previous video, I've just been focusing on the paper talismans, just making them look a bit more tattered around the edges and adding some nice ambient occlusion where the talisman forms kind of meet the hatch handle. Next, I decided to add some nice snow effects at the top to make the shot seem more dramatic. So having wind sweep some of that snow off the top. Weather effects like this can really help make the shot feel a lot more dramatic. I also chose to indicate some highlights, uh, just something subtle to add some more dimension to the painting and to the snow areas in particular. Here I decided to add a piece of rock in front of the Viking's shoes just to make it more convincing that she's actually climbing and interacting with the rock. Funnily enough, I actually started climbing a year ago, so you can really trust me on this point. I've mentioned it before and I'll mention it again, edges. Creating smudged edges really helps soften the background of the image and gives more attention to the focal point, which will usually have tighter edges and more detail. You can also take this as an opportunity to make the silhouette of the edges more interesting and random. 3D geometry sometimes has very straight or clean edges and that's just not what we see in real life, especially in nature. So adding these little details here and there can really help elevate a painting. I'll let the time lapse play out a bit while I add some more interesting shapes in the background. Now that I felt like the background was finally up to par, I started focusing on the figure again, adding some nice speculars and details on the dagger, and some speculars to the lips and face. I kind of waited to add these final details until the very end, because I often find that bringing the rest of the painting to a more rendered stage will point you to very obvious areas that are under rendered, and in this instant it was the face. It's kind of hard watching this footage back because this is a painting from like four years ago and my work has evolved quite a bit from then. So I'm a bit like, eh, I would have done that differently or eh, I could have done a much better job now. <laughs> so I sometimes cringe, but hey, it's still a piece I'm proud of. I think it's a good thing when we can look back and feel like we've really improved. I really did not like this brooch, so I actually added one using the layer blending mode multiply and painted over it to make it look less photo-y, which is a proper technical term. <laughs> I also used blur and smart blur to kind of get rid of some of that detailing. I'm going to be jumping around a lot here, so commentary is a bit pointless, but I just want to reiterate how important it is to add more detail to the areas where you want the viewer to look first. You can see there's quite a lot of detail on the hatch handle, so either I would want to match that, so there's an equal amount of detail on the character, or reduce the amount of detailing on the hatch. 
that is completely up to you. I personally like to add a lot of detail, so I probably would just add some more detail to the character. Time to add in those new arms. So like I mentioned in the beginning, as soon as I spent a lot of hours rendering the rest of the painting, I looked back at the arms and was like, hmm, these really don't feel like they're up to par with the rest of the painting. They look a bit too 3D and not kind of real enough. So what better to do than to take reference photos with more accurate lighting and add them in. I at first tried to paint in a similar silhouette and was like, you know what, why not just like actually kitbash them in. So I did using the techniques in the previous videos. and just erase the areas where the tattoo was. I got rid of some fingers and of course rid of the watch because that just would not make any sense. <laughs> With that taken care of, all I needed to do was just to make the arm blend in a bit better. I didn't really bother with adding in the other arm because you don't really see a lot of it, but I thought I'd use the reference to better communicate the forms and to make the muscles look a bit more convincing. I still didn't feel like things were right with the anatomy, so I called in special reinforcements, aka Omerjan, <laughs> and he helped me out by sketching out the anatomy uh, in a way that kind of made a bit more sense. Ideally, you'd want to do this in the beginning, but since I am a silly goose, of course, I'm going to do this towards the end of a painting. <laughs> Christ, sometimes I get a bit frustrated with myself. So using Omerjan's notes as a guide, I essentially started painting underneath the sketch layer, trying to better improve the readability of the forms, add more three-dimensionality, and so on. I briefly moved on to another area of the painting just to get a break from the character. I decided to push the bottom of the image further back into the distance by adding some more atmosphere. Sometimes just jumping to another area of the painting then back kind of resets your brain. Or honestly just taking an actual break to just do something else for a while or working on something else for a while. And we are back to the character. Time for another time lapse.
I decided to use an app on my phone called Handy, which is a very simple software where you can move some lights around simple anatomical 3D objects. I kind of felt like the face three-dimensionality wasn't convincing enough on the character, so I added the doll's head in and roughly matched the proportions before setting the blend mode to soft light and adjusting the values. I then erased everything that wasn't the head, smudged some of the hard edges and started painting in some more darks and highlights. Flicking the layer on and off again really helped me see how the face kind of lacked depth. And I think it was the right call to make it look a bit more interesting, just to add a bit more three dimensionality. But now that I've kind of implemented that change, I just need to match that value contrast on the areas around the face or the face would just stand out a bit too much and look weird. You can see that I'm still very much working on values at this stage. The value key isn't set in stone from the beginning of the painting. The more you paint in, the more the values will naturally change especially in relation to the rest of the painting. So it's really just like a balancing game throughout the entire process of creating a painting. To help me see things more clearly, I even turn on the grayscale layer to better read the values and see how I can improve them. We're almost at the end. Using a layer set to screen blending mode, I added some more brightness to the bigger snow tops and pushed certain areas of the painting forward and other parts of the painting back a bit. And we're done. As a final touch, I always merge the image as a copy, move that to the top and go to filter, other and high pass and set it to 1.5. You can kind of see that the layer turns gray, but the more extreme value changes remain highlighted. If I then set this layer to soft light, it adds a sharpening effect. It's kind of hard to see due to the compression of the video, but this is a great way of sharpening the image in a non-destructive way. And you can adjust the sharpness by duplicating the layer or lowering the layer opacity. I also always do a second one, but set that one to 15 instead of 1.5. You can see the value changes a lot clearer this way. Due to the sharpening effect being quite intense, when the number is set this high, I tend to lower the opacity of this layer to between like 25 and 50. I also typically add in a noise layer by adding in a layer and filling it with white first, then going to filter, noise and add noise. I then set the layer blending mode to soft light, scale up the texture and lower the opacity. This is to add just a bit more texture to the overall painting and blend the unpainted 3D areas better with the painted areas. And as a final, final adjustment, I added a saturation adjustment and just added a bit more saturation to make the colors really pop. Add that final layer of snow and we're done. So this is the final illustration. Wow, we finally did it. <laughs> <laughs> I will take you through the progression of the updates so you can see how the painting changed from stage to stage. And here's the 3D draft compared to our painted over version. What a difference, right? This is really what I mean when I say that 3D has a hard time competing with illustration work because the 3D version feels a lot more sterile, doesn't it? It's lacking in originality, in creativity, in artistic expression. But yeah, I generally hope at least like a handful of people have found all of these videos useful. It might not be the most fun series to watch, but I actually think you can learn quite a lot from these like slow, quote unquote, boring videos. Anyway, if you've been with me from the very start, thank you so, so, so much. I'm looking forward to moving on from the series and working on new stuff. Have a nice day, y'all. Bye.